possible changes going forward. And uh, so I've done a lot more digging, studying, and I uh, have a lot more information uh, available to myself that I didn't have on July 21st. One of them, uh, unfortunately, I have to make sure that the IUB understands uh, because it's impossible to put in a pre-filed testimony exactly the uh, emotions and uh, work sacrifices and everything else involved that my parents went through in the late 80s to actually purchase this property. I would have been in my teen years at that time, and uh, you know, it was always my dream to come home and farm sometime. And uh, unfortunately, the 80s in farming was not great. And uh, so my parents struggled through the 80s, making sure that they paid for this land. And I remember that very well. And I want to make sure that the IUD board members understand that. Because unless they're in my shoes and live that, they're not going to understand that. So that's where I'm going to start off with this. <clears throat> Excuse me for my emotions. <clears throat> so I want to make sure that everyone understands that I have worked my butt off to make sacrifices as well as what my parents did to make sure that I and my wife were able to purchase this land as well. <clears throat> so, past that, I just read in uh, the Processor's Journal, Volume 2, Number 3 issue, that there are other options available for CO2 capture. In that article, it estimates that every ethanol plant... Objection, Your Honor. State your objection. My understanding is the time for corrections or updates to the pre-filed written testimony. I believe the witness is now going to tell us about some article that he read, which I don't think comes under the definition of updates or corrections to pre-filed testimony. Mr. Jordy. Well, I think that objection is premature if it's information that um, has come to light after his deadline. I think that is certainly an update. We went over this last night. Corrections are to be corrections, not broad updates. So if the witness would like to make some concise updates or corrections, but uh, this is not the time to bring in new testimony. So, so um, uh, yeah, the, the rule allows for corrections and updates, uh, sir, but um, if you can phrase these more in terms of corrections uh, to your uh, testimony, uh, uh, that would probably be best. Okay. I will do so. On page 17 of my pre-filed testimony, I have to find the exact writing in here. It is in regards to the state economy and poses a threat. Uh, I think that $160 million worth of income, if they put on their own CO2 capture and create methanol, the estimation was that each ethanol plant could generate $160 million worth of income each per year. And in my opinion, the 13 plants in Iowa would do a greater good for the state economy by generating close to $2 billion worth of income annually than what this pipeline would ever do for our state's economy. <laughs> also, I don't think I went into uh, description enough on what I do as far as farming practices on my land that do more for carbon sequestration than what CO2 capture and pipeline will ever do. And that is I practice no-till and cover crop on all my acres as well as this piece here. 
And when it comes to digging a pipeline in that proposed route, I don't think there's any way that even a local contractor that actually cares about me, let alone somebody else from somewhere else, really cares on how the land is put back in place after they would propose to put this in. There's no way that they can return it to the current state that my soil is in. It took me almost 10 years Objection, to be honest. Safety objection. Unless this witness started no-telling after July of 2023, I don't believe this is an update. Mr. Jory. <clears throat> well, again, we run into the problem where Summit's trying to neuter and silence uh, all landowners from anything after July 20th or 24th deadline um, from what was said in these proceedings. And so I think they can respond, certainly, to claims made during these proceedings. Uh, I mean, it would just be kind of outrageous if the landowners can't reply to Summit's testimony where they claim these benefits on the record, but yet then Summit has the right to come back and, and rebut everything that the landowners testified to. That wouldn't make any sense. So uh, I, I think this witness is... Uh, uh, addressing information that was testified to during the pendency of these proceedings, which would have been after the deadline for free file testimony. Mr. Leather, a couple of things there, Your Honor. Number one, um, the testimony and exhibit deadlines yeah. are meaningful deadlines. They're set by the board and they're supposed to be respected. Second of all, unlike uh, the majority landowners and several others, Summit did not put its witnesses up here live and ask them direct questions for landowners to now need to respond to. If the questioners cross-examined Summit's witnesses and things came out, that, that doesn't entitle landowners to then come and respond to their own attorney's cross-examination of Summit's witnesses. Secondly, Landowners had an opportunity, every adverse party had an opportunity to respond to Summit's pre-filed testimony, and they did. Um, this is not a time to now start talking about um, historic farming practices on a given landowner's parcel where that certainly could have been included and described, and in fact, in many cases, is described in Jordy Landowner's pre-filed testimony. Okay. The objection is sustained. 7.10 sub 2 does allow for updates that need to be filed three days prior to the hearing. Mr. Jordy, if we can move into cross-examination, that would be wonderful. Okay. Uh, but I guess before we do that, was there any specific correction that you haven't gotten to, as in, sir, something in the testimony that you believe was um, incorrect, an answer you gave that needs to be changed? If not, we'll... Um, move on and other folks might have questions for you. I have a lot to say, but nothing that pertains to that. Okay. All right. Well, very good. Um, with that, I'll pass the witness for cross-examination. So just, I want to, we want to clarify real quick. Um, Sandra has already testified, so Mr. Lewenthal is availing himself for cross as it relates to agronomy, soil. Is that correct? Uh, yes, agronomy, soil, which she was trying to get into, effects to the land, and then the overall financial impact. Okay, thank you. Mr. Taylor. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. I might have gone on the wrong track. We, um, we're here for you. <laughs> well, I don't know about that sometimes. <laughs> but, um, Mr. Lubenthal, do you see the map on the screen there? Yes, I do. Okay. In order to uh, clarify your written testimony, I'd like to ask you some questions using this map. Um, does that appear to be your parcel? It does. And um, south of your parcel is some sort of structures. What is that? 
That is where I and my wife currently live and where our farming operation is based out of. Okay. Um, <clears throat> during Summit's testimony, uh, Mike Rory talked about working with landowners to uh, make adjustments in the route as needed. Um, did you discuss with any um, Summit agent why that uh, route uh, there's north uh, when it crosses your property? I never asked them specifically why it veers north. I did specifically ask them why it didn't veer farther north to avert our land and our home where we live. <clears throat> that was actually back on November of 22. Uh, Mr. Michael Chauvinick I uh, came to my place. I was actually harvesting the that is right around my home to the southwest of that. He came to my field and loaded the combine with me for three hours that day. I think it was on November 9th or 10th, one or the other. When he sat in the combine, he explained to me how he flew from Oklahoma City to Sioux Falls and then drove from Sioux Falls to my farm to talk to me for three hours in the combine. And I told him my dis... Uh, uh, I didn't want, did not want the pipeline that close to my residence, and he expressed uh, willingness to move it farther north. And my rebuttal to that is, and you'll see the building site to the northwest of my home, is that the farther away you move it from my facility, my home, the closer you move it to my neighbor's home. And who am I, or who is he, or Summit, or anyone else to say that my life is more valuable than theirs? Um, so, uh, given Mr. Rory's testimony that uh, Summit was trying to work with landowners, what has been your experience? Uh, I'm not exactly sure how to say that without being extremely negative, but, uh, uh, you know, they contacted me a lot, I will say that, uh, maybe relentless. I would just look through the list of communication with me uh, earlier this morning, and holy moly, a lot of phone calls, a lot of voicemails, and some of them are not accurate. Uh, some of them aren't even on there, like Michael Chauvinac's uh, visit to visit with me isn't even on the list of contacts, so I don't know if they can't even get uh, a list of contacts, right? How in the hell are they going to get anything else done, right? So, yeah, it's a concern. So, uh, you're going to talk about the agronomy and the soil, did you discuss any of that with um, Mr. Roy or Mr. Skovanek or any land agent? I did not. I may have said something to Michael Brewer about it. Uh, he's the one I spent most of the time, most of my discussion with. He was uh, the only one I actually met face-to-face -face with uh, repeatedly, and I did share my concern over the disruption of my extremely fragile soil, uh, you know, what I've worked so hard to, to build up in, uh, in the last 15 years, okay. really 40, but yes. So what was his response? Uh, no response at all, other than that it was going to be restored. But right in the easement it says it does not have to restore, it'll put it back at uh, it, it, it will not be replaced to how it was before it was ever disrupted. I know that. It can't be. There, you'll actually see, as long as we're talking about that, you'll actually see a light-colored line that runs from the southeast corner of my property up towards the uh, north part of the, uh, of the highlighted area of my parcel. That's an actual 24-inch main tile that uh, I and my wife installed back in 2006, I think it was. So it's been almost 17 years ago. And yet to this day, you can still see that strip of where that ground was disturbed. And that was 17 years ago. And that was done by a local contractor that I know very well. And I knew all his workers. And they did their best to make sure that that was put back in the same situation that it was taken out of. And it still shows up 17 years later. Yeah. Uh, is there a lot of piling on your property? 
yes, that farm is completely pattern tiled every hundred foot. Okay. Uh, Summit witness Roger Ellingson um, testified that uh, he's been hired by Summit to repair any damaged tile and put it back uh, as good or better than it was uh, before. Um, uh, do you agree that that can be done? I have some very high reservations about uh, agreeing to that. Why? Uh, my experience is, and I had another farm, not this one, but a different one that uh, uh, my landlord actually allowed the neighbor to tie into uh, a main that they had ran into the property that I farmed. And they specifically, it wasn't Ellingson, but another tiling company that was a reputable tiling company, ran their connecting tile into the existing main and went across every one of the tile lines that we had in our property, cut every one of them, 13 to be exact, and did not fix any of them. And I had to fight with them tooth and nail for a year and a half before they were ever fixed. And I'm afraid that Ellingson, I don't even know where they're out of, not my issue at this point, is that if there is an issue with any of these repairs that they actually do, is how long is it going to take to fix? And am I going to be compensated for the loss of income in the meantime? Yeah. Because I doubt that's going to happen either. Yeah. Some witnesses have testified that this project will be a benefit to farmers, uh, because of the price of corn and the ethanol industry being supported. Uh, do you agree with that? No, I do not. Why? As I was going to mention earlier about the Processor's Journal, the article I just read, that I think the carbon capture facility at each ethanol plant makes way more sense and way better for the state's economy as well as my economy than Capturing the CO2, which isn't going to capture all of it anyways, actually, uh, from the information I have found, is that it will not actually capture, it actually has a larger carbon footprint than what they actually capture from the ethanol plant with the pipeline, which makes absolutely no sense at all. I would much rather have an ethanol plant put in their own facility, capture the CO2 themselves, make the methanol, and generate the income and keep that here in this state. Over a 10-year period, that's uh, uh, $160 million per plant times the 13 plants that Summit has on board uh, is roughly $2 billion in extra income every year. And you take that times 10 years, is it's astronomical and it makes more sense than what having our 45Q tax credits do to go to a pipeline. It's a net benefit to me as well as the state's economy, as well as our country's economy. And do you sell, uh, do you sell your corn to ethanol plants? I do. Does that... Almost 99%, uh, of, almost 99 of the corn I raise goes to ethanol facility. But even at that, you don't feel that this project uh, benefits you as a farmer? Uh, no, I do not. And the facility that I send most of my grain to is not signed on with Summit either. So that tells me a little bit about the ethanol plant I've signed on that I provide most of my corn to. Yeah. For the record, which plant do you sell to? I sell most of my corn to Cargill facility in uh, either Fort Dodge or Fairmont. Okay. Fort Dodge, Iowa, and Fairmont, Minnesota. Okay. Th thank you. That's all the questions I have. Ms. Golas. Good morning, Mr. Lubenthal. Lubenthal. Either one, I've answered to a lot worse. I'm Jean Collis, also a landowner. I have a few questions. Uh, can you move out on the KMZ map a little bit farther, please? Okay. Um, do you have concern about the construction of this pipeline across your land and your accessibility during construction to the northern portion? Are you have a driveway on the north on the north end of that field. Uh, I'm not near as concerned about the accessibility as what I am visibility. 
is 400 and it actually at one point the line was less than 350 feet from our house and I drive in and out of my driveway countless times per day I don't even know I can't even imagine I didn't sleep very good last night when I found out I had to testify this morning anyway because all this stuff just keeps coming up in my head but I can't even imagine how irritated how frustrated I would be if they, this pipeline actually went through, having to actually watch the construction on my my farm, it would I, it just drives me nuts now to even think about it. That's less than 400, I think they did it the other day when my wife testified, 450 feet, I think, from our house. Not to mention, you know, that there's uh, 500 head of feeder cattle that I feed here as well. Some of them custom fed that... Uh, you know, if there is a rupture, which there will be someday, if it happens to be here, that's $2 million worth of inventory of cattle just on our facility, not counting the grain and obviously the people. Um, did uh, Do you have concern, I think you've sort of mentioned it, about uh, the lack of income or the productivity uh, from that land where the pipeline goes and their ability to to fix it uh, or reclamation. Objection. I'm not saying that well. State your objection. Asked and answered both here today as well as in the direct pre-filed testimony. Ms. Colos? What is your concern about how the land will be affected um, if the pipeline is built? Same objection. Ms. Colos? What is the overall financial hit you will take if that pipeline is constructed? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, same objection in the pre filed testimony, also in the testimony here today, and perhaps, I don't know, less than three minutes ago, uh, $2 million worth of cattle inventory. Ms. Colas. That was in one year, not forever. Okay, uh, you indicated you have extremely fragile soil. What is the composition of that soil? Now there's approximately four feet of heavy black soil on uh, on top of uh, clay base underneath. <coughs> Are you concerned? It's susceptible to erosion. Hence the reason that we no-till and uh, use cover crops to make sure that we build as much organic matter back in the soil to feed the microbes in the soil, hopefully to reduce the fertilizer usage on our farm. So you're already automatically using a uh, CO2 mitigation to keep it in the soil and to use it when it's, prop when it's needed, correct? I am. I am. <clears throat> Did they explain to you why uh, the pipeline jogs up and then goes back down? I don't think there's actually ever this direction. Asked and answered, the witness testified about uh, Eric Skovanek riding in the combine with him for three hours, the uh, adjustment of the, the route to the north there of the property, and his question about why it's not moved even further north of where it is right now. It's asked and answered. Ms. Colas. Sorry, Ugh. I'm being shut down. No further questions. Ms. Gerdhagen. Thank you for testifying today, Mr. Lumenthal. I just have one follow-up question. Uh, you mentioned that you have pattern tile in that farm about 100 feet apart. How Do you know how deep that pipe, that uh, tile is buried? The range is anywhere from four to the 24-inch main that goes kitty corner across that field is uh, in places is 18 feet deep. So anywhere from four feet to 18 feet deep is uh, the range of depth of the uh, tile on that parcel. So you have a tile main going through there as well? There's actually four mains that actually run through that property. There's a 24-inch main that I installed since I and my wife have owned the property. There's also a county main that runs through it, and then there's two additional mains that, uh, that uh, my father and the joining landowner uh, went in together to uh, 
to take care of the surface water that comes across there in a large rain event. Are you able to describe in words approximately where those four mains are located? Well, if I reference that light angle in the KMZ, uh, I'm going to call it red shaded area that runs from the southeast corner of that parcel up to the northwest corner of that parcel. You see it, uh, let's see, be up in the top of the shaded area. You can see that, you see that right there. So that is where my 24 inch main actually stops is right there. About 10 feet to the west of that is the 12 inch main that my father and adjoining landowner put in together. There's another eight inch main that they put in together. Uh, it was probably 15 to 20 years ago. And then there is also a county main that runs through the same area as well. That's the lowest part of the farm and where the water always wants to pond. So when you, says it, when you say it stops there on the north, northwest corner approximately of that red shaded parcel, does it start from down by your farmstead or does it start from the parcel north of there? So the tile actually starts where the cursor was just located up on the north end of that uh, of the shaded area. Okay. It actually ends just south of my, uh, if you scroll down on the KMZ map, there's a bulkhead to the dredge ditch just south. And that tile main dumps in, you'll see where those that tree line is. There's a bulkhead to a drainage dis the ditch uh, at the road intersection just south of my building site. So the tile travels from the northwest uh, corner approximately of the red shaded area, travels to the southeast to the parcel that is to the southeast of the um, red shaded area. Yeah, so it goes up to that 20, the 24 inch main that I installed comes uh, up to where my lane enters uh, 50th Avenue, the road there, and then it actually runs on the west side of 50th Avenue parallel to the road down to where the bulkhead for the drainage ditch uh, is located uh, just on the west side of the of the 50th Avenue. And that's where all the county mains actually dump into is right there. All the tile mains dump into the creek located there at the bulkhead. The 24-inch main ends up in my parcel all the other uh, end the uh, 12 inch and the 10 inch that my father put in, but the county main actually goes continues on to the north and northwest, uh, further north of my parcel, and to the adjoining land orange to the north. But if I understand you correct, all four tile means then outlet to the drainage ditch. That is correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. Uh, with no other questions, Mr. Oh, Mr. Jordan for redirect. Yes, thank you. Uh, now, sir, you were asked uh, a couple questions about if, if Summit mentioned why the uh, proposed route jogs at an angle coming into your property and then um, exiting. But I, I want to ask a little different question of you. In your discussions that you referenced, did Summit ever tell you why they couldn't go further south? Of your property it was never mentioned okay do, do you see any impediment other than of course you're opposed to this whole concept but if we can possibly set that aside do you see any impediment of going further south and missing your property no my sisters actually own that uh, property south of my location I know they're not at all for this either Okay, as so well as the landowner to the east across the road, I and my brother farm that across the road to the east. We also farm the parcels a mile west that my two sisters own a mile west, and they're not for it either. Okay, so the, the property we're seeing immediately to the west of the red shaded, your targeted parcel, you're saying you also farm that and it's owned by someone who has not signed an easement? Directly to the west, they actually have signed an easement, but I and my brother farm that land. I see. Okay. And and then what 
do the folks who signed an easement to the west do they own that entire property north to south so the so the portion of ground immediately to the west of your home and grain bins they do okay and they own it from there all the way to the to 40th avenue to the west okay uh, they and their, their sister can, can we zoom out please just to get a better perspective here just a little bit more one more so that darker that darker color here the two red ones farther west are the pieces my two sisters own and the darker green piece uh on the east of 40th avenue that runs all the way a half mile north and south uh, is my one land on a uh, land lord i'm sorry that i and my brother farm and then the lighter crop by uh, that comes up to my parcel is owned by the property owner that resides in the on 180th street just north of that and i'm sorry your your sister's um you say, do they own property that we're looking at right now that's uh, designated in, in red uh, or, or it's some different ground? Nope, it's in red. Okay, to the far west of the screen, those parcels? That is correct, yes. What's, uh, what's for the record, what's your sister's last name? Uh, my sister, Anne, is Lupenthal, and I have a sister, Amy uh, Lupenthal Gallagher, that almost... Uh, no, that's actually designated as three parcels on there. Okay. And and just to, to be sure, you're you're saying they haven't signed and they're opposed? That is correct. Okay. Then you said you, you sell about ninety nine percent of your corn to Cargill and I think you said in Fort Dodge in Fairmont. So you um, truck corn from, from Kasuth County down to Webster, is that right? To that is correct. Okay. I think it's 47 miles, if I know for sure. I've made, made the trip plenty of times. And do you know uh, if any of your discussions with anyone at, at Cargill, um, if they are in, in talks with uh, Summit or considering potentially trying to be on this uh, proposed route at all? The people I've discussed with at Cargill have not given me any indication that they have any intention of signing on with any carbon pipeline. Okay. And and if they did, would you be looking for alternative uh, markets for your grain? Absolutely, because Valero's ethanol plant is right next door to Cargill's in Fort Dodge. And I say next door, it's right across the street. And ever since this carbon pipeline has come up, I have ceased selling any grain to Valero. None. And that was because of their um, relationship, or at least prior relationship, with uh, the net proposed navigator pipeline. That is exactly correct. And would, would you agree if, if um, uh, enough farmers, corn growers such as yourselves, essentially uh, boycotted selling corn to ethanol plants uh, as you say you would if if those plants participate in pipeline we agree with that yes okay uh, and I, I don't know if you've been listening in but um are you aware that other folks who have testified have shared that same um that's that same feeling you have and are, are committed to either not growing corn anymore and or not providing it to any participating ethanol plants. I have heard that and I commend them. Um, I still think it's funny that they're on top of wanting to take my land, now they want to take my water too. Well, and that's something new that's that's come up um, recently did mr skuvenak uh when he was trying to woo you in on this project ever mention that they were going to be intense water users as well absolutely not and although you i take it you were already um, opposed to the entire concept for many reasons um had had you also known about the water issue would have that made you even more opposed? 
absolutely. I have a hard enough time. There's a sand vein that you can't really tell in this aerial imagery, but it kind of loops around, follows the same location as what the, the county main does that comes through. And I have a hard enough time. Uh, in 2012, uh, last year and this year, that sand vein has a hard time producing anything. Uh, last year was about 300 yards wide where it just didn't produce hardly anything in corn. And this year, even the beans were in the 30 bushel range that I harvested just last week. And uh, I, I can't imagine what that would do to uh, further production if uh, <laughs> take, uh, by my estimation, is somewhere around 400 million gallons of water that they want to consume. I can't imagine that that would anywhere near improve my cropland facilities <clears throat> in production. But, but what if some were to say, don't worry about it, we'll, we'll, if you can prove that something we did caused you damage, if you can convince us of that, don't worry, we'll, we'll pay you some money. Would that make you feel any better? Yeah, I, I don't think so. No, absolutely not. Okay. And, and that's, I, I take it, based on prime, pro, the first probably reason is because it has to do with reliance on them, working with them, and using your time and energy to try to prove to them what you think they contributed to. Yeah, absolutely. They haven't tried moving the line all that hard because a half mile east of my place, there's a landowner that's signed on as well. And they own the property a half mile north of my place, so I don't know why they wouldn't sign an easement with them. Summit Ag put a hog site on their uh, farm that they just bought uh, two years ago, so I don't know why they wouldn't go sign with them and just route it another half mile north. There's no residence up there anywhere. I don't know why they wouldn't just try to go through there. It's a whole mile of no residence, actually almost two miles. Can we zoom out, please, so we can see that and then just kind of pull it down a little bit? Yeah, yeah, sorry, there we go. Okay, so just so we can close the loop on that statement, you said Summit Ag has, has um, a hog barn or facility to the north of you? They actually have three of them that you can see on the map the way it is. There's one a half mile north of me and a little bit east. And, and, and that's what's... Just what's let me just stop you just because, again, we, we're not actually recording this video for the record. So in, in the darkest green 40-acre uh, parcel, is that a summit facility where the hand is, which would be, uh, yes, like you said, uh, one parcel north and east of you? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. But it looks like you're back now, I think. No. Yes. I had a phone call coming on my phone, and I think it disrupted. I'm running on a hot spot because I couldn't get internet connection this morning. Very good. I'm sure that'll never happen with their gate. That'll never happen with their gate bells, will it? <laughs> uh, I might come back to that. But, but, but to finish this area of inquiry, the Summit Ag you're stating owns the two hog barns that we can see immediately to the north and east of your targeted parcel on that very dark 40. Okay. Yep. All right. And that was just put up a year, year and a half ago, that site was. And they purchased the one uh, a mile farther east on the road. They just purchased that one from uh, the landowner of that uh, oh, between six and eight months ago. And, and with, are there two barns shown just south of that road and then uh, two parcels to the east? Is that what you're referencing? That's exactly right. So the L-shaped, the darker one from where I live, so in between that, that L-shaped one that the cursor just went over. So that landowner signed an easement and the landowner directly to the east that has that other hog site on it has also signed. So that is a father's son. And the grandfather actually owns the parcel where the new site was put up a year and a half ago across the road, Kitty Corner, to the northwest. I see. So if this were some, for some reason approved, you would state that given Summit Ag's interests and given the um, willingness, for whatever reason, for these other folks to... Um, sign easements or participate in the project generally that moving the route north away from your ground uh, would be a potential
potential alternative route. And what's a heck of a lot better than being 350 feet from my house? I know that. Okay. And so yes, I would say yes, I would agree with that. And during your, you, you said the, the summit uh, ag hog facilities uh, immediately to the northeast were put up, you said, like a year and a half or two years ago? Yes, Objection. Two years ago. State the okay. objection. I, I don't know. There's no tie here to any cross-examination questions. This is a discussion about moving the line a uh, half mile north and where various hog facilities are located, having nothing to do with any of the cross-examination questions that were asked. Why, well, Jody? Yeah, I would totally disagree with that. There were questions asked about what discussions were had about moving it or not moving it, and if if why any restrictions were given. And I'm I'm going into that, and also it's relevant to consider uh, reroutes. Uh, that's one of the I think five questions the board asked other folks. So I think it's very relevant for uh, potential and likely reroutes that are available. We have a response. Yeah, just briefly, um, the information about some AG's hog facilities is something this witness volunteered in response to Mr. Jordy's question, not any cross-examination question. Well, All right, Mr. Jordy, you, go ahead, get your question and, and move on, please. Okay. All right. So if if um, if uh, Mr. Brastetter and company at Summit Ag, who it's no great secret are involved in this uh, project, are so behind it, I think to sum up, why not just put the pipeline near their facilities rather than impact you as an unwilling participant, correct? Correct. Sure. All right. Then you said you had tile uh, at four feet to 18 feet deep. Did I get that right? One, eight, 18? That is correct, yes. And, and well, that, well, that main, actually, that 24-inch main crosses my lane coming into my facility off of 50th Avenue. It is approximately 18 and a half feet deep right there. It's cheaper to put the pipe in deeper. When I put that pipe in, it was cheaper to put it in deeper than what it was to route it around the west side of my facility a lot shallower because you cut down on the number of feet. And I'm sure that is exactly the same reason that Summit wants to run this pipeline absolutely as straight as what they can because it's cheaper to dig deeper than what it is to add footage. So given you have tile 18 feet deep that's existing and given Summit has testified they want to stay 12 inches or one foot away from any existing um, lines, would would you say that, again, if this were approved for some reason, that Summit should um, go at a minimum depth of 19 feet below your property and tile? That would be ideal for it, it you know, given the assumption that it's actually approved and sure. it should come through our land. Sure. And, and dealing with Mr. Chauvinek, who rode around with you for three hours and you know, again, discussed, I'm sure, how wonderful he thought the project was and wanted to, quote-unquote, work with landowners. Uh, did you take it from that conversation that Summit would be certainly willing to go to 19-foot or deeper uh, on your property to accommodate concerns? Absolutely. And evenly spaced between our location and uh, my neighbor's place, so it would actually be equidistant between the two of us. Okay, very good. Sir, I don't have any more questions for you. I appreciate that. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Lubenthal. We appreciate it. Mr. Jordan, next witness. Well, let's see. Your Honor, just as a housekeeping matter, if I could inquire of Mr. Jordy how many witnesses he believes he might have today. Yes, good question. So um, I'm told we have got Craig Huntoon, I hope, on the line virtually. Okay, good. That's one. And then Deborah Wheeler is here in person.